Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about dynamic blocks. We can access our dynamic blocks by going to the View tab of our ribbon, and then clicking on Tool Palettes. Here, I've placed the tool palettes on the right side of my screen, and I usually have the Auto Hide turned on, which allows me to just mouse over them right here, and then they pop out. But I'll leave them open for our viewing purposes for today. On the left side, we have many categories, including 3D modeling, constraints that we'll learn more about later, and annotation tools. And all of these tools that have this yellow lightning bolt as a symbol right next to them are essentially dynamic blocks. And so we can essentially take any of these tools, such as this callout bubble, and just place them on our screen with the insertion point. And now we're ready to use the block. How we do that is we click on the block, and now we have different kinds of grips that each block will have, and we're going to go into how to make these grips very soon. Firstly, to use dynamic blocks, we can essentially mouse over any of these grips, and this one, for example, with this circle, will give us some instructions. So this is telling us to set the rotation angle of the symbol, so we can click on it, and now we can see that we have some predefined little guides that allow us to set our rotation accordingly. So what we could do is, firstly, we'll want to turn off ortho if it's turned on, and now we can essentially snap to these guides, so it looks like we're increasing by increments of 15 degrees. So these are the settings that were set with this dynamic block. And so if I wanted this to face 90 degrees up, I can just click up here, and now the rotation has been set. The grip in the center of this square grip is our insertion point. This is a very special grip. This is not a grip that you would take and then essentially drag or modify the actual tool like most grips for most lines and other simple objects. Those grips we can actually stretch the object to a different shape, for example. But this grip just simply allows us to move the object. So I can move this right here with this grip. I don't have to click in the object and then go to my home tab and click on copy anymore. I can essentially just use the grip and modify it just like that. Now we have another grip here, and if we mouse over this one, it says flip the symbol direction. So this was actually made, and this is a toggle that allows us to essentially flip the entire symbol 180 degrees. And so if we do that, we've essentially moved the arrow very quickly. So even if we were to use the rotate tool and rotate it to the left, if we use this flip, it still flips it properly. So this is flipping based on this axis right here. So this block is a very simple example of how dynamic blocks work, and we have many other examples right here. This section callout was found right here, and when we click on it, we can essentially insert it just like this and place it on our drawing. Once it's placed, we have extra grips here that are a little bit different from the callout bubble, which essentially doesn't have the flag at the end. So we can mouse over this grip right here, and this allows us to stretch the reference length. So we can turn ortho on or off, it doesn't really matter at this point, and we can essentially stretch it to fit whatever section we're trying to demonstrate. So very, very easy, very, very simple to use. Then moving on, we have another drop down here. This toggles the display of the flag. Let's click on that. Looks like we can choose whether the flag at the end is on or off. So by turning it off, this little flag right here is now gone and we can turn it back on very, very quickly. There was no need for us to explode this object and to delete this separate entity, which is essentially several lines and it looks like maybe a hatch pattern from the block. It's already been added as a dynamic setting that's part of this block. Then we have the same grips that we saw earlier. We can flip the symbols rotation so I can flip it to anywhere that I want. Or if I don't need to rotate it, I can just flip it very quickly by using the flip symbol direction. That also will flip the flag itself. So it looks like that is now tied to multiple objects instead of just the arrow and the hatch pattern with the regular callout bubble. And we still have the insertion grip here, which allows us to quickly move this callout whenever we need to. So already we can see that this dynamic block has a few more settings and it's quite useful. Moving on, we have this block right here. This is essentially a block that we found under mechanical. It is a hex bolt. So what we can do with this is we have a grip down here that when we click on, we can see that we have those same little guidelines that allow us to change how long the hex bolt is up to a certain point, of course. So it looks like this one goes up to about 12 units and we can modify that if we needed to by editing the, the block itself. But this is pretty standard and it's set for Imperial as we can see in our 
tool palette here on the right side. So this is quite nice for the Imperial Library. And so here I can just extend that to, let's make it four this time. And then we can click on this grip here, and this gives us another toggle. It allows us to change the actual size of our hex head. So right now we're set to one unit, and we can increase that in increments of about, it looks like 0.25, so about a quarter inch each time. So we can make this as big as we need it to. So here, for example, I'll set it to 1.5. And there is the size of our new hex head. And the last one we have here is quite nice. We also find that under annotation, I believe, or perhaps it's under architectural. Uh, let's see where I found this symbol. We can go through our categories here and look. Ah, yes, the graphic scale. There it is. It is under annotation. And so what we can do with this graphic scale is just one simple grip right here where we can click on this drop down. And here is the magic of dynamic blocks. We can now change the scale to be something completely different. And we have essentially several scales in one. So if I wanted to change this for to one inch equals 50 feet, I would just click on that. And oops, looks, let's make sure that worked. Looks like the numbers didn't change. And oh, there we go. So now the 200 foot one is changing its numbers. There's the 500 foot scale. Let's check 50 again. There we go. It looks like we had a small little visual bug. If the numbers or the symbol itself doesn't change, try to flip it back and forth between other, other symbols, and it looks like it'll refresh itself. You might also want to use the regen command. You can just type in regen, and then you can just click on that, and that will refresh any graphical issues that you might be having with AutoCAD. And so there you go. You can just click on this symbol and change it to any set of scales that you'd like. So we're going to put it back to one inch equals one foot. And there it is. So this is just a few examples of certain dynamic blocks that we can use in AutoCAD. And now we're going to make our own. This is the end of the first part of our series on dynamic blocks. Part two covers how to create multiple insertion points and alignments for your blocks in AutoCAD. Hope you enjoy it.